to stop and rest, please stop and rest. Um, if you need to, you know, go to the bathroom, just um, go and do it. Don't worry that you're going to miss things because again, this will be available to you. Now, um, lastly, because I teach yoga without the woo, without all of that airy fairy fluff, whenever I say energy and whenever I say force, I mean physical. In, in the physics sense, yeah? So physical energy, physical force. When I say um, connect your senses to your breath or anything to do with um, breath work, I don't mean it in any airy-fairy connotation, but ground it in a sense of physiology, yeah? How the breath moves, um, well, oxygenates the body, um, nourishes the body and um, well how our body moves during the the process of breathing of inhalation and exhalation and when I say focus and concentrate um, and anything to do with the psycho our psycho-emotional state I don't mean that in any woo and airy-fairy kind of sense either um, we ground that in psychology, we ground that in tools, in mental and emotional tools that help us cope with everyday stresses, yeah? So, enjoy the class. I hope you have um, a bottle of water with you or maybe a towel, something to pat you down. And by the way, as well, Grab an extra towel that you can fold and use for your knees just in case you do need knee padding, okay? So, let's come down on the mat. Let's kneel down on the mat or any comfortable kneeling poses or seated pose. Let's come and sit. Roll your shoulders. Just heat up the body first, yeah? And we are going to start with our foundations so in terms of most of the poses in yoga our foundations would be our hands and our feet yeah and in sun salutation of course those are still our foundations now without thinking about it just bring your hands down on the mat automatically yeah don't think about it and um, my assumption I, I do have some assumptions here yeah so forgive me for that but it is just um, necessary to go through um, the steps or the, the the teaching method to to um, for me to deliver to you um, what I'm trying to say yeah so bring your hands down on the mat Without judging how they look, just observe how your hands are down on the mat. Um, are they cut or are they kind of this with your fingers together, with the cup of your, your palms raised, with, you know, just basically these tips of the fingers and the thumb here that's connecting in, into the mat. Yeah, just or however, whatever shape your hands are in, just observe. Now, lift yourself up once again. Just be comfortable. You can even keep yourself in a standing pose if you want to. Shake your hands, shake your shoulders, shake your hands. And if you've ever, you know, had um, a baby, had or have a baby or small children, or been around, you know, infants and toddlers, we, we do this game with them, don't we? We t tell them to close and open their hands, yeah? And they follow, yeah? And in um, physical therapy, if you have any hand, wrist, or arm injury, or finger injury, any kind of hand injury, this is also a therapeutic um, movement. Why is that? Yeah, and let's slow it down. 
I hope you can see my hands. I'll bring it. I'm sorry if I'm a bit backlit. There's nothing I can do about that. So we'll just um, adjust the color and the sound for the videos on the website, yeah? Let's slow down the opening and the closing of our hands. I am assuming here that you are following me, yeah? We teach this to both, you know, very small children, infants and toddlers, and for therapeutic reasons. Why? Because it strengthens the muscles of the forearm, it strengthens the small strands of muscles in the hands. And see how, um, how the hands function. Can you see that? When you open and close it, the fingers naturally widen, don't they? We don't do this, yeah? Can you see that clearly? I hope you can. We don't, we don't um, open our and close our hands with the fingers in, with the palms cut. We don't do kind of this, yeah? We try to open the hands and widen them as much as we can. And that's also why in yoga, in my teaching, when you bring the hands down on the mat, we widen them. As wide as it's comfortable for the webbing of the fingers, yeah? Because why? This creates a good foundation for our hands. It also, in a way, avoids us doing this. Yeah, because when the hands are cut, the natural angle of the wrists goes in. And when the wrists go in, the elbows naturally wing out. Yeah, but when the fingers are wide, of course, it's, it can also widen in, in this pose. But when the fingers are wide, we can straighten up the, the creases of the wrists into a more neutral position, pointing forward. Yeah. So if you can see my hands, imagine my hands were on the mat, the fingers are pointing forward and the elbows can come in. So sideways, this. For example, if I were in a chaturanga, this is the position. The elbows are in, not wide, and the wrists are straight. So when the hands are down on the mat, we press the circle of the hands. The pads of the fingers, the base of the wrists, all the way, maybe even the, the, um, this section of the knuckles of the thumb and the pad of the thumb. Not the, the really flat when, when your fingers here and your thumbs up. Not the, uh, really the flat of the thumb, um, just because of the angle. But if this whole side of the thumb is down on the mat, pressing in, you get more stability, you get a bigger base as well, yeah? Um, so that is the circle of the hands. Now for the feet, we'll, we'll talk about the alignment um, later. We're just talking about the, the foundation first, yeah? So that is the circle of the hands. Widen your fingers as wide as you can and press the base of the, of the fingers all the way to the blade of the hands, the base of the wrists, the side of the thumb and all the way back up, yeah? Circles of the hands. Now for the feet, I hope I don't topple over. For the feet, commonly I see the feet, for example, I'll just come into a warrior stance. I see the blade of the feet collapsing in this way. I hope you can see that. Yeah, that is a very, very bad alignment, not just for your ankle, but for your knee and your hip as well. And I know, well, here again, I am making an assumption that you've heard the, um, the cue, the four corners of the feet. Personally, that doesn't make sense to me <laughs> because when you look at our feet, yeah, when you look at our feet, for me, it's not four corners, but rather a triangle. The, the whole of the heel, the, the pinky base, and the big
big toe base. So it creates a triangle, a, a thin triangle, triangle. The base of the big toe, the base of the little toe, and they go up into the hole of the heel. Yeah. So that is a triangle of your feet. And when you place it down on the mat, if you've ever done my classes, you'll hear me every now and then, I tell you to flick your toes up. Um, this way, flick your toes up, whether you're in a dorsal flexion and angled ankle this way, or in a plantar flexion, I will cue you to flick the toes up. What does that do? It creates strong arches, yeah? And hopefully if you have collapsed arches, this will help in addressing that as well. It creates really strong arches and a good base for your, well, for the, for the weight of your body, yeah? So circles of the hands, triangles of the feet. We have um, posts about this. I will share it in our group. And we also have a blog about this in, um, in the reading room in, on our website. So go to the website, drop, drop down menu, mindset, drop down reading room and it will be there yeah now the distance of our hands and distance of our feet by the way while we are going to do the sun salutation in a bit there's so many things that we can talk about um just in one flow so what we're going to be covering today is really the foundations yeah and to keep you safe in your flow now, distance of the feet, bring your fists together. Again, I'm assuming you are doing this with me. Bring your fists together. Bring your, your fists down and just measure two fist widths. Doesn't have to be snug. I used to say snug fist widths, but it doesn't really have to be snug fists between your feet. And that's your hip width, yeah? Middle toes pointing forward, the same as our hands, middle, hand, middle fingers pointing forward. Now, that is the distance of our feet. It's just two fist widths between the feet. Because what we are measuring, you might think, oh, may, maybe you're one of those people who have wide hips. So you, you might be thinking your feet need to be wider. Or maybe you have narrow hips, so you're thinking your hips need to be narrower. What we are measuring, though, is not the outside, the um, exterior of our hips, not this, but the joint, yeah? Not the outline of your body, but the joint. So when we are measuring the joints, rule of thumb, two fists, bring it in front of you this way, yeah, just right above the pubis, on the front, on the anterior of your hips, slide them down, and that's your fist width, uh, yes, fist width, and your feet distance, because your ankles, your knees, and your hips are now in alignment, the joints, not the outline, but the joints. Now, for the hands, and again, I'm assuming here you've heard shoulder distance, yeah? The thing though is this, I am bringing my, my hands in my shoulder distance. It is a little different, the hand alignment or hand distance is different from the feet distance, okay? Because, here's the reason. If I bring my hands, the, the um, middle of the wrist, to align to my shoulder, it's this. And when I bring my body down, for example, I'm down on the mat. When I bring my body down, there, you can see it properly. This is what I commonly see. With the hands in line directly, in front of the shoulders, the elbows will naturally wing out, yeah? And this is our alignment. 
that creates a crunching in the shoulders, that creates an odd angle for the wrists and, and the source of a lot of wrist um, problems, yeah? Because see, see the angle? It's quite unco uncomfortable, it's quite unpleasant. And when we are um, bringing weight into our shoulder girdle with the elbows out here, the line of force goes from this body out to your elbow and back in. So you don't have a strong foundation here, yeah? You don't have a strong foundation. Now, what I want us to do for my classes and hopefully even if it's not in my classes, bring it into your other classes as well. The hands are not in line, yeah? Not in line with the shoulders, but a little... Sorry, I had to just um, reset my camera. Just roll your shoulders, yeah? Shake your arms. Bring your arms naturally beside you in a relaxed state. This is how we gain our alignment, yeah? From here, contract your shoulder blades so that your pectorals are nice and open. Um, angle your wrist this way, so from a relaxed state, open your hands, angle your hands, yeah? And without bringing your arms wide or narrow, just with the upper back contracted, just lift your arms up. And that is your shoulder distance, yeah? That is your shoulder distance. Not here in line with the shoulders where I'm squeezing my chest, but in a relaxed state and just lift your arms up. There's also another way of getting that alignment down on the mat and we'll, um, let's go to that. I hope you can see me, yeah? So with my feet hip width distance, the hands, this curve of the thumb from the tip to the corner of your wrist, yeah, the curve of the, of the thumb follows, I'll bring my foot up, follows the curve of your toes. <laughs> Let me not fall. The curve of your thumb follows the curve of your toes. So with the, your feet, again I'm assuming you're coming with me, with your feet one hip width distance, you can even come crouch down here. Bring your hands and bring the curve of your thumb in line or following the curve of your toes. Yeah? And that already brings you in your shoulder width. It's all the same. Yeah, it's all the same distance. Our body is really, um, really great and, and really, uh, well, it makes sense that way, yeah? So, again, quick recap. Whenever your hands are down on the mat, spread your fingers as comfortably as you can. Middle fingers pointing forward. Feet, one hip width distance. Two fist widths, middle toes pointing forward as well. But not overly so. There's a caveat here, not overly so. We do want to bring the hip joints to neutral, yeah? But that will also depend on how your joints are, make, um, how do I put it? How your joints are shaped mechanically is what I'm trying to say. How your joints are shaped mechanically. In our everyday life, usually our toes are pointing forward because when, when we sit, our legs open up a little bit, toes pointing out, and it becomes our normal, even when we're standing, yeah? And that's why we want to correct it a little bit by bringing a little bit of that internal rotation, but more neutral than really internally rotated, just to correct all of this, yeah? All of this ringing out of the feet. Personally, I've had to do this, um, uh, 
I, I still have to correct myself because my my normal is out here and that sometimes impacts on my lower back because the the sacroiliac joints here get compressed they get turned in a little bit and what we want is neutral yeah so i have to remind myself of that however this is the caveat maybe your joints are you know are are um shaped mechanically meaning to say the shape of your socket and the shape of your ball joint really demands that your feet may be a little bit pointing out i don't know I, because i can't see you yeah and i suppose it will take an uh, an mri or, or you know a cat scan or a deep x-ray of your hips to figure that out but what i'm saying is feel for your hips feel for what feels natural to you and then if you can point your toes forward and see how you feel in that if you're pointing your toes forward and you feel your legs doing this then maybe it's better for you to point your toes a little bit out so that your knees and your hips are are more neutral because this isn't good either yeah this isn't good either especially um for the for the um, ligaments and tendons of your knees especially on the inside this isn't good either so while we do have those rules of thumb for your foundations feel for your body as well because we're all the same but we're all unique anyway um next one that i want to go through before we do our flow and i hope with, with all of that movement you've heated up a little bit yeah um oh when we bring our hands up i want you to bring the backs of the hands in while we wave our body up and we'll go through the spinal wave next week because again there's a lot to talk about but this one bring your hands together and wave your arms up yeah do it with me i'm assuming you are doing it with me right now so relax your arms bring the backs of the hands in press them slightly in as you wave them up purpose of that when we do our flow in our planks there's a lot of wrist extension this 90 degree angle of the of the wrists yeah we can do uh, modifications where it doesn't have to be this absolute 90 degree angles it can be a little um, less steep yeah but even 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 with that said pressing the backs of the hands in as you wave them up look it counterposes the wrists and we always want to do that yeah we don't we always want to balance all of this wrist extension with wrist flexions yeah the last one the last one that i want to go through the other things you'll go through next week but the last one i want to go through is your half lift often i see half lifts you know from our forward fold and i i um tell my students come into half lift they do this or even if i bring i tell them to bring their finger pads high on their shins they still do this yeah the back is curved this way there's no real power in the hands the knees are pushing out to the back and there's apart from your literally standing up and folded over there's nothing that the muscles are doing more to benefit your strength and your length yeah your strengthening and your flexibility you are just literally hanging in the pose what i want us to do is this have you ever seen that um diagonal brace in in architecture or, or in engineering yeah the i only have two hands but this is what i'm trying to say yeah from our forward fold 
bring the pads of your fingers on your shins, micro bend the knees, and push your arms, the length of your arms from your back, that's where the energy and the power is coming from, into your fingers. It's, it's a case of an immovable object meets an unstoppable force, which is this pushing into your shins of your arms. Something has to give, and that will be this lift. And again, I mentioned the um, diagonal brace. <laughs> I shift it to the back because I want you to feel as well. The more you go back, the more hyperextended the knees will tend to be. So bring your body weight a little forward into the triangles of your feet. Yeah, use the triangles of your feet. Again, uh, unstoppable, um, immovable object, which is your legs, unstoppable force, which is your arms, action and reaction. The energy has to go somewhere. The body will react and that reaction is to lift the body. Yeah, I mentioned that diagonal brace in architecture, it's the same thing. This diagonal brace is the one that lifts the body. Yeah, use the strength of your arms and the strength of your legs in your half lift so that you spare your lower back that um, even if, uh, no, not, 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 not that word. <laughs> um, even if you are, you know, put, you are lifting yourself up with a strong back, you should be pushing through your arms. Otherwise, when you just lift without the strength of your arms, it's all your back and your lower back that's carrying all of this body weight, yeah? Even for me, that's quite, oof, that's hard on your QLs, these muscles, yeah? It's hard on your QLs, on your quadratus lumborum muscles, the muscles that attach your lower ribs to the iliac crest and the source of a lot of um, lower back problems, um, you know, in, in uh, however you move your body and in yoga practice as well. A lot of, yoga, of lower back problems for yoga practitioners come from trying to lift the body via just the QLs and the, the rest of your back muscles, yeah? Why would you only rely on your back muscles when you can synergize it with the strength of your legs, you're pushing your yourself up and you're pushing your arms into your shins, your shins are counter pushing forward and you're lifting up. You're distributing the body weight and you're saving your lower back, all of that problems, yeah? Now, we will take a, a very, very short break. I just need to take a swig of my coffee. <laughs> And then when we come back, I'll, I'll hop back on. I will maybe count to 10, maybe. Um, maybe you need a bathroom break. Maybe you need a pat down. Maybe you need a swig of water as well. And let's all go to our break and come back here maybe one or two minutes. Anyway, I will wait for you here. Count to five. If you're late, you can access it um, anywhere you want to. Anyway, all right, all right. See you, two minutes, two, you know, you know what I mean. Love you, in a bit. I hope everyone is ready. Two or maybe three rounds. Let's make it three, shall we? Um, give you value for your, well, this is free, so value for your time. <laughs> Come to the top of your mat. Just listen to my instructions especially if you can't see your screen. Roll your shoulders. Let's do this. Don't overly think about it, yeah? Just trust to be guided. Back to the hands in, wave your, wave your body up, wave your arms up, pressing the backs of the hands in. Counter pose for your wrists. 
Push your hips forward, shallow back bend, just a shallow one. Squeeze the front line of your body, your front body muscles to lift up. Hands in, press your elbows in, knees bend, lead with the crown of your head, forward fold. Set your hands how we've been doing. Finger pads high on your shins, squeezing the armpits in. Wave yourself up. Let's make this nice and smooth. Exhale down, giving you your options for the cobras. Pushing through your arms, feel that lift of your chest. Walk your feet back. However many times you need to walk back. This is the strongest pose for this flow. Full plank. Knees down, untuck your toes, knee plank, body weight all the way down, flat plank. Hands hover up, squeeze your back, low cobra, this is your option, or press your hands down and add the strength of your arms, higher cobra. Exhale, wave down, toes tuck under, Push yourself up, knee plank, knees lift up, full plank, knees bend and push through your back and your arms, puppy pose, spiral wave. Take your time here, undulate the spine, wave the spine, waving forward, full plank, pushing through your arms, carry yourself, and walk up, forward fold, finger pads high on your shins, lift up halfway, half lift, exhale, forward fold, knees bend, backs of the hands in, wave yourself up. And I also do believe in trusting you as well to remember our cues and our um, lessons, I'll pair back the cues a little bit. Push the hips forward, shallow back bend. Squeeze the body up as we did. Hands, elbows, knees, head, hands down. Let the head go. Distributing your body weight. Finger pads on your shins, wave up halfway. Don't forget the lessons we've learned. Exhale down, set the hands. Walk back. Plank. Knee plank. Flat plank. Squeeze up, low cobra, hands hovering. Stay or higher cobra, flat plank, toes tuck, knee plank, full plank, puppy pose, spinal waves. In your own time, just don't rush this. The purpose of this is to neutralize the spine, so don't rush. Wave forward, plank, step up, forward fold, lift up halfway, half lift, I hope you haven't forgotten our lessons, exhale down, knees bend deeply, backs of the hands in, lengthen the body up, last round. Hips forward, shallow back bend, upright, hands, elbows, knees, head, hands, forward fold, half lift, forward fold, Plank, knee plank, flat.
flat plank. Shallow cobra. Higher cobra. Flat plank. Knee plank. Full plank. Puppy pose. Spinally. Full plank, forward fold, half lift, forward fold, stay, sink down and sit, sit down on the mat. I hope you can still see me. Tell me as well in the comments if the live um, is too dark and that is also why I am recording it separately in my main um, camera so that I can adjust the lighting and the sound quality and it will be better. Um, the one on the website will be much brighter and clearer in sound. <laughs> I can't do anything with, you know, with the laptop and where I live, backlit and all that. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. And again, all your questions, your comments, you are welcome to add them under the, um, well, in the comment section. Um, and I mentioned earlier as well that the foundations, um, getting Your Foundations is available as a blog as well in our reading room. So there's a lot of resources there that talk about the same thing because we, we have different ways of learning. Yeah, some are more visual, some are more audio, some um, like following along and watching, some like reading, some like just listening. So I hope a lot of the, the other um, variations of this workshop um, suits your needs and your moods and keeps you doing your yoga safely and in a very practical, rational way as well. If, by the way, you want to do your Shavasana, come down on the mat. Let's do one last thing, yeah? Let's all come down on the mat because I always end my classes this way, you know, do it this way. The sun will be in my eyes. Lie down on your mat. I hope you can still see me in the live. Hug your knees in and draw circles with your knees. Sacroiliac joint massage. We always finish our classes with this because it's very important to bring the SI joint back into equilibrium. And if you want to lie down in your Shavasana and take a bit of a rest, you're welcome to, or if you have other things to do for the day, you're welcome to pop off the mat and we'll all get on with the rest of our day. <laughs> Thank you very much for being here with me. I love you all. We will be doing, um, because this is the paired back sun salutation A, we will be progressing next week. Another sun salutation A, but we will talk about the spinal wave. We will talk about um, back bends. So back bends um, in the sun salutation A, yeah, that standing version and the um, upward facing dog and we'll also touch on cobra pose which are all back bends so the back bends in the sense of rotation a um and the spinal wave and then we will do uh, a little bit more of a progressed um sense of rotation that's for next week anyway that's enough for me bye